Good morning, folks. Do you remember the big news a few months ago when a third radiation belt was detected around our planet? Normally, there are two Van Allen belts, with the outer shell the more unstable. Particle wave interactions on the day versus night side of the planet, however, combined with ion cyclotron waves produced from the atmosphere up through the equatorial regions of the magnetosphere to disrupt flows and make an extra shell for about four weeks. The electrons making up that unexpected belt were measured near the speed of light, Indeed, the authors suggest that the genesis of the particle speed, and indeed the particles themselves, is yet to be revealed. Every ISON shot today can be found compiled on Tony Phillips' spaceweather.com real-time ISON gallery. It's linked for you below. There are now eight hours of fly-on-the-wall discussion, three of them dedicated to ISON. Expert astronomer Francis Walsh joined us this week and gave his opinions on the topic. Two quick notes. Arctic sea ice loss appears to be at the trough, likely to begin regaining ice soon as the equinox was yesterday. We also had reported the Pacaya volcano erupted, but not far away we had a tremendous eruption at the Santiaguito volcano. This, this is the swath of rain from Super Typhoon Usagi. Likely it is fading now as it heads inland, but the damage is done. I am still waiting for a full casualty reports at this hour. Also. I've mentioned that his little brother was right behind him, but he appears to have chosen his own path, turning so much it might even miss Japan. Sunspots are abundant and spread across the disk, that's also the issue. Can't have magnetic complexity without grouped umbras. Here they fly solo or remain magnetically separated. Wake up bro, you're sleeping through solar maximum. The solar wind couldn't be much calmer, perfect ambient quiet without geomagnetic instability. Electron flux is all steady with nice maintained curves. You will remember the filament eruption we had yesterday. It'll miss Earth by a lot less than I initially expected due to the breadth of the ejecta, but indeed, the eruption is heading south and away. Here we see the magnetic connectivity of the inner planets to our star. Mercury tough to see as always on this gray magnetogram, but it does make for the best background. Looking at the coronal hole situation, Turning in from the left, you see an equatorial dark region near the limb, but which hooks up and back over and ahead to the north. This is the next coronal hole, and the situation there is getting interesting. General coronal hole power is increasing across our star, including now what's coming towards Earth-facing position. That yellow dot on the left is the most powerful outward force currently on the sun, and it will face Earth early this week and will raise the earthquake warning when it does so. There is actually a second filament ripping away right now in that same position. By the time you see this, it will have detached and likely be heading away from Earth as well. But I'll leave you with a couple filaments that are turning into position to be geo-effective if their trigger fingers get itchy. Plasma filaments on our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.